In this lesson, we're going to discuss the solution to a linear programming problem using the simplex method. The simplex method is a systematic algorithm that computes for the objective function from one corner point to another point until the optimal solution is obtained. Okay, so we try to solve the linear programming method using simplex or linear programming problem using simplex method. So we want to maximize z which is equal to 36x plus 24y subject to the following constraints. We can follow the following steps in using the simplex method. We set up the linear programming problem and then transform the objective function to the following. So transpose 36x and 24y to the left hand side to obtain the following. So negative 36x minus 24y plus z equals 0. And then we convert each inequality to an equation by adding a slack variable, which is considered to be a non-negative. So for the first inequality x plus y, uh, which is less than or equal to 12, so x plus y plus a equals 12. And for the second inequality, we have 4x plus 2y, we add the slack variable b, and then change the inequality to equality and then the right hand side you have 32 so a and b here as uh, a and b here are our slack variables we construct the initial simplex table with the objective function written at the bottom row so this is the first equation the second equation and then the objective function will be your third equation. So here we have uh, two uh, variables x and y and then the slack variables a, b and then the objective function z. So all in all five variables. So this is how we're going to set up the uh, simplex table. Okay, so for example, here we have the coefficient of x and y and a are all equal to 1. So we have 1, 1, 1 here. No b, so the coefficient will be 0. Okay, no z, so 0. And then on the right hand side, you have 12. So in the second equation, we don't have a, a and b, so the coefficient will be 0, 0. And then for the last, we have ter negative 36, negative 24, so the coefficients for a and b will be 0, and then z, the coefficient, as you can see, is equal to 1. So the right-hand side is 0. So we will solve this linear programming problem using simplex method, and we can use the following uh, steps uh, to solve the problem. So we first set up the linear programming problem. So we have the... Uh, the objective function, which is in terms of the uh, variables x and y, and then subject to the following linear constraints. Now we transform the objective function to the following. So we transpose 36x, all terms, to the left hand side. So we get z minus 36 minus 24 equals 0. So we start with x, y, and then followed by z in this order. And then we convert each inequality to an equation by adding uh, slack variables, which are considered to be the negative. In this case, we are using slack variables a and b. So we have x plus y plus a equals 12. And then for the in this inequality, we have 4x plus 2y plus b equals 32. 
And then we construct the initial simplex table with the objective function written at the bottom row. So we will consider this uh, for uh, the coefficients for x and then for y, a variables a, b, z. And then we have the uh, numbers in the right hand side of each equation. So here we have three equations. The the two linear equations and then your equation for the objective function. Okay, so for x plus y plus a equals 12, so we have here 1, 1, 1. Uh, we have no, for the first equation, we have no uh, variable b, so the coefficient will be 0 also for z. And then in the right hand side, we have 12. For the second equation, this one. So we have uh, okay, sorry. four, uh, two, we have zero here for A, and then B we have one, Z is zero. And the right hand side we have 32. For the objective function, we have negative 36, okay, negative 24 for Y. No A and B, so zero coefficients. And then Z, we have one. And then on the right hand side, we had zero. And then uh, we find the smallest negative entry in the bottom row that identifies a column for the pi pi pivot element. So in this case, we, we pick uh, negative 36, that is the smallest negative number. And then we will consider the first column as your uh, pivot column, in this case. And then com uh, compute for the coefficient by dividing the right hand side value of the equation by the coefficient from the identified column. And the smallest of these quotients identifies the pivot row. And the pivot element is the entry common to the identified column and row. So, okay, so we copy the coefficients. Okay, so we have here one, one, and then this copy. Okay. And then we divide the cosh, uh, the value of R by the coefficient of X. And then we consider the smallest quotient. So in this case, the smallest one is 8. And the pivot element should be the entry common to the identified column and row. So we have identified this as the first column, uh, the first column and then the second, second row. And therefore, 4 should be our... Uh, pivot element and then we apply Ghost Jordan deduction method uh, in performing elementary row operations you know, we make the pivot element uh, equal to 1 so we divide each okay we divide uh, each row by oh, this, uh, each Coefficient of the second row by 
by 4 to make it 1. So, this divide by, uh, sorry. So, this 4 divided by 4. Okay, so this will be your pine wood element. And then we make the other entries in this column containing the pine wood element all equal to zero by performing Gauss Jordan reduction method or by performing some elementary row operation. So we copy this one. special and then only the values so we'll take this as your r1 okay r2 r3 Maybe we can just copy this one again. Then we perform R1 minus R2. So that is will, this will be equal to 0. So we choose, uh, we select R1 and then R2. And then you, you can move the cursor to the right to copy the, or to perform the same operation to the other entries in that row. Okay. And then we have R3. Plus 36 times R2. <clears throat> and then we can just move the cursor to the right to copy the formula. Okay. And then the next is to repeat the process until the entries in the bottom row are all positive. So we have here negative 6. So we identify the second row or rather the second column. And then we get the quotient you know, by dividing uh, this time uh, your R by, by Y. Okay. So maybe we can just copy all the values here again. Pay special. Then copy just the values. Okay, and then we perform, we compute for the quotient, which is the value of R divided by the coefficient of Y. In this case, this is the smallest quotient, and then we identify the, uh, the second column, and, or rather the uh, the second column and the first row as your uh, pivot uh, columns and row and then the common entry is 0.5 so we take 0.5 as your um, pivot element and then we multiply it by 2 so that this will be positive 1 so we select the first row, then multiply by 2. And then we copy the rest. And then we perform, so this is now the pivot row. Let's see. 
lovely and special. And then we perform now the following to make the other entries in the second column all equal to zero. Okay, so by performing the following operations. So take note that if this if this is 0 0.5, if you want the, if you want this to be zero, we multiply this by negative 0.5 and then add to 0.5. And then to make negative six zero, so we multiply uh, one by six and then add to negative six. So we have the second row minus 0 0.5 times R1. Enter. And then copy the formulas. Okay. And then we have R3 plus 6 times R1. Okay. Copy the formula. Okay, so uh, take note that you stop the process when all the entries in the bottom row or third row, in this case, the last row, are all positive. So note that uh, all entries of R3 are now positive. And this will be your final final matrix and the solution should be in this column and therefore the maximum value is the maximum value of z is at 336 and that will occur when x is uh, when x is 4 and then y is 8.